I just saw the film Unplanned, which is the film adaptation of Abby Johnson's book, Unplanned, and I just want to encourage you to see it. Everyone should see this film. This film is for everyone because it's true. It's the true story of Abby Johnson and her life, her experiences fighting for and against abortion. Abortion is such a divisive issue and whether you're for, against, or apathetic about abortion, I just challenge you to see this film and to be open-minded and to challenge yourself. It doesn't matter how you currently feel about abortion or any issue really. I think it's important for us to always be open to the truth and this film is the true story of Abby Johnson. In college, Abby Johnson started volunteering for Planned Parenthood because her goal was to reduce the number of abortions. And she eventually became a clinic director. She actually became a director of two clinics. And her goal was always to help women in crisis and to reduce the number of abortions. And when she was given abortion quotas, because that is their main source of revenue, and when she was called in uh, because an extra set of hands uh, was needed for an ultrasound guided abortion, and she saw the truth of what an abortion is on the screen, she couldn't be a part of abortion anymore. With technology today, with ultrasounds, you can't deny the truth of what abortion is. I really recommend seeing this movie. I know Abby was on set a bit, not like every day or anything because she's a busy woman, but I did see in an interview that everything in the movie she has either written about or talked about before. So there's nothing new in the movie. There's nothing exaggerated in the movie because her story is compelling enough that nothing needs to be exaggerated. I will say that I did like the book more than the movie. The movie made me cry so much. It really pulls on your heartstrings, but the book had so much more information about Abby and her story her inner dialogue, they couldn't possibly fit all of her inner dialogue into the movie. Also details about her case at the end of the movie, a lot of that is in this book. Also her experience at different churches, when she was for abortion, she was rejected by some churches. When she was against abortion, she was rejected by other churches. And that is so sad to me. I know in the Catholic Church, everyone is welcome. Everyone is asked not to receive the Eucharist, however, unless you are in a state of grace, but everyone is welcome at the church and during communion you can even come up for a blessing and not receive if you're not in a state of grace. That is another topic for another video. So I definitely recommend the movie, but I definitely recommend this book. I think that's the case with any film about a book. There's just more in the book. But another example is when Abby counseled someone uh, to not receive an abortion and helped her receive some services. In the movie, it left out how she helped that person. She got free diapers for a year for that woman. You know, there's just so much in the book. So I highly recommend the book and it's such a page turner. I actually read this in a couple days because I was just curious to know oh, what happens next. And I could have read it in one sitting if I didn't have to work in these types of things. Also in the book, Abby shares just the turmoil and agony and fear she had when she knew she needed to leave her position at Planned Parenthood and how the Coalition for Life uh, leaders listened to her and offered her help when she had no one else to turn to. But if you're not a reader, definitely at least see the movie. The movie is rated R, not for violence or nudity, but because of the reality of what an abortion is. And it's crazy that you have to be 17 to see this movie on your own to see what an abortion is, but you can get an abortion in the United States without a legal guardian with you under the age of 17. And that is just 
crazy. It's legal for you to get an abortion as a minor, but not to see what an abortion is in a movie theater. Before any procedure, you should know what is going to happen. We all know knowledge is power, so that is just so ironic and crazy to me. And I understand both sides of the argument on the rating because yes, on one hand it should be rated R because abortion is horrific and scary and unnatural, but if a movie about abortion is rated R, then actual abortions should also be rated R in that a legal guardian should accompany a minor in order to get an abortion. So because minors in the United States can get abortions without a legal guardian present with them, some states they don't even have to show any ID. Because of the current state in the US, I believe that this film should have been rated PG-13. If I had a teenage daughter, I would recommend to go see this film, but I would prep her beforehand and say, you know, there are some scary parts, some bloody parts, but this is true. This is truly happening in our world today. There were a lot of parts in the movie that I loved. In the beginning of the movie, uh, you saw the abortion that Abby was asked to help in, and the doctor in the scene is played by a real abortion doctor. Now he's an ex-abortion doctor, Dr. Anthony Leventino. And I have him linked below explaining all of the different abortion procedures. And you can trust that what he's telling you is true because he has performed, I believe, thousands of abortions. Lila Rose also makes a quick cameo. She's a big advocate for the unborn. Also in the movie, I really loved how it just showed the humanity and compassion of all people for and against abortion and in the industry and those not involved in the industry. And it just reminded me of my video about peace on the abortion industry that we all need to remember that there are good people, good compassionate people on all sides of this issue. In the movie, it showed peaceful, prayerful people outside of the clinic with a very calm, peaceful presence. And it showed aggressive people yelling, you know, murderer, and you know, those people unfortunately exist. But what was missing in the movie that Abby shared in the book was her thought of what made these people that aggressive? Something must have happened to them relating to abortion to make them that impassioned and aggressive. The movie also showed the compassion of the abortion workers. And there's even such an ironic scene of, you know, the workers after a long day of many abortions, uh, they celebrated Abby's pregnancy with a little baby shower. And they're genuinely happy for their friend, Abby, and her baby. So I really liked that part of the movie because with this divisive issue, people on both sides vilify the other side, but there are good, compassionate, loving people on all sides of the issue. And I would be against abortion even if I weren't a Christian, but I have to mention that even just last night in my women's Bible study, we reviewed Jesus's commandments and the first most important commandment is to love God with all our hearts. And the second commandment is to love our neighbors as ourselves and our neighbors are on all sides of this issue. So we cannot vilify the other side, whichever side we're on, we must love our neighbor. So when talking about this issue, I think we all need to remember that we are called to love our neighbor. When we disagree, that doesn't mean that we don't still love the person that disagrees with us. So again, go see this film and if you can, read her book. And I don't even view her book or her film as a pro-life book or film because it's her true story and it shares both sides of the issue. So I challenge you to see the film and or read the book. And I know my channel is tiny, but you know, where is the New York Times review of this film? The BBC, you know, there are more reviews for Marvel films than these good films with 
truth. And I know a lot of Christians complain about, you know, all these films about violent themes and sex and evil. So when these films come out, we need to take the opportunity and support these good films that are telling the truth. So I encourage you to see this film. There's no post credit scene, FYI. And I've linked below Abby Johnson's website, her ministry, and then there were none, uh, abortionworker.com, lots of resources. If you've had an abortion, check out Project Rachel. So check out the resources below and definitely see this film. It is in theaters right now, this weekend. So I hope you go see it and I hope you're having a beautiful Lent. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.